Chapter 12 Over Sky gave Dylan a once-over as he hauled himself up and shook himself. He studied her as she stood on the other side of the fallen body, her arms wrapped around herself. You okay? Sky nodded. I am. Are you? Dylan patted himself. Yeah, I think I am. He blew out a long breath. Too close. Sky dropped her arms and spun her bracelets. Look, I know what you're going to say. That I didn't listen, but I did. I listened to you, and I ran. I listened and realized they were not coming for me. She frowned up at his stern face. I listened to you go down. And I listened to myself to go back for you. I helped you. There's that. Dylan looked down and kicked at the trail. I can't be mad at you for saving my hide. One of the sick moaned. Dylan walked over to it and grabbed hold of the bolt, pulling it out of his leg. Sky grimaced and shivered, but the sound didn't seem to bother Dylan one bit. She turned away when he pulled on a second arrow. With the used bolts in his hand, Dylan waved her up the path. Come on, we have to go. They're waking up. No, we have to help them, don't we? Sky moved to walk to the nearest one, and Dylan put a hand on her arm to stop her. It's dangerous to be that close to them. But we're immune, Sky said. You sure about that? Sky hesitated, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know that anyone is. And if we're immune to the airborne part, are we immune to a bite or the spit? Sky shook her head at the leaf-covered ground and shrugged. Dylan took a step toward Sky. Come on. You ain't gonna be able to help them and keep the boy safe. Even if we're immune, maybe we could carry it back to him. Sky winced as she peered down at the man she had hit over the head. Tears welled in her eyes as she remembered the last person who had needed her help. She had walked away from her. Sky gestured to the sick that scattered the ground. What about them? I'm not. I don't know what we're supposed to do here. But just. Leave them? I don't know. Dylan rubbed at his scruffy jaw. I've been calling the doc to send someone out to gather them up, but he hasn't been answering lately. Yes, Sky said, he's gone to Fenton. What about Bill from Riley's? The funeral home? He may be aware someone. I heard him on the radio just before I left my house. Sure. Dylan looked over the damage they'd done. Till then they'll be okay. Ain't too worse for wear, a couple of headaches and a couple of holes. They'll do all right. Another moan and Dylan put his hand to Skye's shoulder giving it a slight push. Sky gave them one last lingering glance, still unsure about this decision, but what else could they do? The path to the truck seemed so much shorter now their lives were no longer in danger, and Sky grinned in relief for a moment as she settled herself inside the vehicle. But as they drove down the road, the adrenaline and emotions over what she and Dylan were forced to do became to show. Sky's hands shook so much the only way to slow them was to clasp them together. Dylan's eyes were on the road and his hands gripped the wheel. He glanced at Sky. Your running skills are impressive. Sky gave him a little smile. Thank you. I'm sure it had something to do with sheer terror. She raised her trembling hands to study them. It'll pass, Dylan said as a twitch shook him. He wasn't as shaken as her, but his occasional jerk showed the run-in had affected him too. Dylan might be tough, but he wasn't so hardened that the chaos of this new world and the decisions it demanded he make left him unaffected. He glanced over at her and ran a hand over his chin. I can tell that was hard for you. Sky hung her head and nodded. It should be, for both of us. I hope we never get used to all that. Dylan glanced at her again. That's why I wanted you up that trail. Sky opened her mouth to protest. Look, Sky, I'm real glad you took care of that guy. 
But most times, Dylan frowned, most times, I'll need you to be where I tell you to be. I can't fight and search for you. I need to trust you to do that. Sky reached out and touched his forearm. You can trust me. You can trust me to have your back. Her voice was firm. I can help. I understand what you are saying, there needs to be a leader, but I need to be able to use some judgment. Dylan looked out the window and back at her again. You have no judgment to use. Sky didn't answer as she turned away from him. It's just you don't have the know-how to be out here with all this going on. I shouldn't have brought you. Then where would you be right now? Sky asked. Dylan huffed out a sigh and shrugged a shoulder. Unsure of his response, Sky's first words were tentative. You're right. Teach me. Show me how, so I can be of help. This is the world now. I need your knowledge. I need it for me, and I need it for Jesse. Dylan's eyes opened wider, then narrowed. Okay. Ain't gonna be easy though. I didn't figure it would be. Sky shot him a little smile and laid her head back against the seat, taking a few slow, deep breaths to steady herself, then she looked over at Dylan. Did you get any of their saliva or blood on you? They didn't bite you, right? No, don't think so. Couldn't have gotten through my jeans or boots. Dylan looked over his arms. Arms look good. Sky averted her eyes and held back a chuckle. Yes, they do, she thought. Dylan looked down the top of his t-shirt, then raised the bottom up over his chest and ran his hand over his abdomen. All good. Sky's eyes widened. Two long lines of old scarring ran down the side of his body twisting from his upper back down to the top of his abdomen. Something bad had happened to Dylan when he was a child. I better check your back. Sky tucked her legs up on the seat of the truck and steadied herself in the moving car by holding his headrest. She pulled out the neck of his shirt and peered down his back. It was laced with burn and strap scars. Sky's heart ached. Dylan had been beaten badly in his life. Though a couple of the scars were newer, most were a decade or two old. She'd noticed the cigarette burns on his and Wade's arms before. Those were nothing next to this. Sky tried to stick to the business at hand. None there. Let me check lower. Dylan moved forward hugging the steering wheel as she pulled up his shirt from the bottom. Her fingers brushed against his hot, bruised skin. He flinched and glanced her way. Sky's throat ached as she looked at one of the worst abuse cases she had ever seen. So many scars, even knife wounds. Did his stepfather stab him? What kind of man does any of this to a child? No, not a man. That is no man at all. What do you even call a person like that? Sky's jaw clenched in raging anger. Bruising is starting, but no bites. You are good. Settling back in her seat, Sky tried to be inconspicuous as she wiped a stray tear from her eye and ignore the troubled glance Dylan sent her way. Dylan hardly noticed his scars anymore until something like this came along. He didn't like that Sky had seen them, but Dylan appreciated that she hadn't gotten all emotional about it. A little tear was nothing next to some of the extreme outbursts he'd heard when people saw the scars that covered him. Still, he didn't like the sadness on the woman's face. It's all right, Sky. Sky turned to him, anger now mixing with the heartbreak, though her tone was soft. No, Dylan, it's not. A child's home should feel like a sanctuary, be safe, not what you had. To endure a childhood like that, it must have been misery. Dylan grunted as a twinge moved in his chest, an emotion he rarely allowed himself to consider. A wish he could have had the happy, secure boyhood others had. He quickly shut the thought down, wishing never did any good. But Skye was right, and Dylan acknowledged her words with a small nod. Well, it is what it is. Skye looked down at the truck floor, then at him. 
I'm sorry you went through that. You ain't got nothing to be apologizing over. Not wanting to discuss the subject further, Dylan changed it. So, what's up with the sick biting? Sky blinked a couple times. I'd forgotten most people aren't aware of what this disease is. The biting comes from the rabies side of the virus. Rabies rewires the brain. People, animals, it's the same. It's a smart virus and needs to transfer by blood or saliva so it makes the infected want to bite. This thing is rabies? Ah. Uh. Makes sense, now you say that. Sky explained her visit to the Fenton Hospital then said, A G flu is in other countries too. The disease is rabies mixed with the 1918 flu epidemic, the worst flu of all time, highly deadly on its own. The disease control estimated about 70% of the Earth's population would get the illness. As we are aware few survive the AG flu. Dylan scoffed. More and that are dying. How exactly did these two get combined? That, no one owned up to. The doctor's friend theorized that the AG flu was part of germ warfare but wasn't sure if the sickness was the US's, and got loose by mistake, or if another country sent the virus over here. Staring out the front windshield, Dylan said, either way, we're screwed. Yeah. She said. Yeah. Yeah he agreed. Sky sat back against her seat. Then jumped and yelped. What? What's wrong? Quick as lightning, Dylan reached across the seat and pulled her to him as he slowed the truck. Sky sat forward and pulled her shirt up from the bottom. Please, get it off. There's a bug on me since before they came after us. It's still stinging me. Dylan saw the problem and pulled a bee from her back and flicked the insect out the window, then drew the stinger out and rubbed the spot. How's that? Better. But it still hurts. A little pout colored her voice. Dylan held in a chuckle. She probably wouldn't appreciate him finding her cute right now. Well, all I've got is spit right now so we'll need to wait until we get home to fix it up. No, that is gross. Sky tried to reach around to touch where it still hurt. Let it be. It'll will be fine in a few minutes. I know, she mumbled as she tried again. This time Dylan smirked. I said, quit fussin', woman. Sky flashed him an irritated look. Dylan laughed. It didn't bother him at all, in fact, he kinda liked seeing those green eyes blazing a bit of fire in his direction.